everybody. Hello. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's Thursday. Wow. Welcome to R3 2021. What is what is the, today, Catherine? Tell us all about today. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> today is all about Kendo React. So we are jumping in. We've got a ton of new components. We probably won't have time to look at all of them, but there's a bunch of new stuff in the Kendo React release. And I am hyped to get into it with y'all. <laughs> there, there really is. I was I was looking through your list and I was like, wow, she's got, this is a lot to cover this, uh, this release. So <laughs> welcome everybody. Say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're watching from. I know it's kind of slow in the beginning um, because, well, Twitch ads and also streams are always a little bit slow. But holler at us. Let us know where you're watching from. We want to hear from you. Hi, I see I see Ivana and Sarah and Zelly in the chat. Hi guys. <laughs> oh, so um, tell us how you want to get started. What would you like to show us or talk about first? What do we what do we do? Oh, well, let's I guess uh, <laughs> jump on in and take a look. Give you like kind of a quick overview of our what's new information, and then we can jump in and look at some examples in the demo app. Does that sound good? Awesome. That sounds <laughs> wonderful. We've got people from Florida, the Netherlands, and apparently Bean Town is what Zelly's going with. And I don't, I don't know if that's the real name, but I need a sign if so, like a picture of a, a sign. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Undisclosed location. <laughs> so, she's, so she's so secretive. <laughs> Was that an option? <laughs> Oh man. All right. So I just wanted to walk us through real quick. This is our what's new doc. You can check it out on Telerik.com, our Kendo React blog. Uh, this will just kind of give us a real quick because there's so much good stuff and I know we're not going to have time for all of it. And I wanted to acknowledge how amazing all of our devs are and give a quick run through of all of the work that went into this. Like this is insane. So uh, starting us off, we've got the pivot grid, which is just incredibly super powerful. <laughs> like, I will level with you and tell you, I don't think I even know everything it can do. And I spent some time <laughs> digging into it. It is just insane. I uh, I don't think I've spent any time with a pivot grid before. And so looking at it, it looks very beefy on the feature set. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> We've also got our multi-select tree, uh, just giving a quick and easy way an alternate from like a, a select drop down gives you a little bit more granularity, the ability to kind of nest some objects, which is great. Um, the heat map, which probably maybe gave you a little bit of GitHub contribution anxiety like it did when I first saw it. <laughs> it looks like that grid, which on mine is eternally empty. <laughs> No, I, I always I, I that that's hilarious. That that's where your brain went. I mean, I see contributions. I guess code yeah. wasn't. I don't know why. I was like contributions to I don't know the Bake Off. Like we <laughs> <laughs> GitHub. Obviously, that makes total sense. I should have been. That was the first that. thing I thought of because I'm always when people are like dark green the whole way. Everywhere I've worked has like private repos, and so I'll have like a splotch uh, here, a splotch yes. there so when I do something personal. <laughs> Uh, our breadcrumb, which is just an easy navigation option. And then we move into some of these really awesome um, styling related components. We've got typography, which is a good way to kind of organize all of your styles. For those folks that are maybe not as interested in doing a CSS deep dive, we've got some good things for you. Typography, stack layout, and grid layout are all going to be much to your interest. <laughs> you have so many new components. It's overwhelming. I know. Like, I'm trying to just breeze like, through it's amazing. Real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got some things that got improvements, but we will dig into those later. For now, I'm going to shift us over into oh, maybe <laughs> into our demo app. Which I, I know, like, chat, I got a sneak preview of, and it's mind-blowing. Just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my gosh. 
gosh, I love it. Also, is that like the normal local host for React apps? Like, I'm used to 4200, so. Oh, yeah. Good. Or are you fancy yeah. and you're like, I will use 3000 only? Oh, absolutely not. No, <laughs> no, this is the default. <laughs> I appreciate that you think I would care that much. <laughs> <laughs> to have it like a custom port number that only you run on, like. <laughs> no. So what is it for yours? Forty two hundred, you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, for at least for like Angular apps that use the CLI, I don't. I don't know. Is that not huh. common? Did I just make that up? I <laughs> no. I don't know. I was more. I wonder if it's like a Hitchhiker's Guide joke. It's like forty two. Oh 42. my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what is LCARS? And did I say that wrong? You know, totally nailed it. So uh, for those of you that are not huge nerdy Star Trek fans like me. <laughs> Elkars is <laughs> the menu system that's used on all of the ship computers. Uh, it's normally Elkars with a C. I think I did that backwards because my screen's mirrored. Hold on. Elkars <laughs> <laughs> with a C, but this one's Elkars with a K for Kendo React. <laughs> oh, my. So, Goodness. Yeah, you showed me like screenshots of, from the show and I was like, yeah, it's a bit, like it's it, it looks so much like this. So if you're not a fan, like I've <laughs> I've seen a couple episodes, but I have not never binged them all. So if you're in the same boat, let me tell you, this is like spot on and gorgeous. Like, with the, <laughs> and you built it in like a day. I don't. <sighs> it was not that fast. But yeah, uh, I will also uh, the repo is public. You can go poke around at it and see some examples of our components. But I will warn you, uh, this is, I think, week three for me <laughs> as part of the progress team. Um, so this is a little bit duct tape and string <laughs> on the backside. Oh, my <laughs> but, goodness. Um, it's working. And honestly, I do want to say that like it's week three and I was able to build this because the components are crazy easy to implement. Like the fact that I was genuinely able to just jump in and start throwing things together, I was, I was I impressed. Mean, I know it's it was, my job you, to be impressed, but also I'm legitimately impressed. <laughs> you like said you're three weeks in, like to the job, but like this, like this is like what a week old or something, like if that, yeah. like, and so I was like as as a devra, like my first week on the scene, I, they were like maybe write a a blog post, you know, the first few weeks on the scene about, and I was like, about what? And they're like, yourself, you know? And I was like, <laughs> a blog post about myself. So Catherine is not only tackling live streaming, right? And is it called a handle on GitHub? I don't know. So that people could poke mm -hmm. about on the- It okay. is Catherine Grayson Nans. And I will go ahead and drop, I can throw the link to the repo into the chat. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Ooh, maybe there it went okay <laughs> it takes, a, takes a second and then um if you are on the tubes because i think we're streaming to the youtubes as well mm -hmm. uh there's the link below on github and she's katherine grayson nance on github and it's a kendo dash demo so check it out but she is going to give us a first class tour <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I just want to kind of poke around at some of what we've been working on. The other thing I really wanted to highlight, um, I'm very like front of the front end. I came from a design background. And so that kind of stuff is always like front of my mind. Part of the reason that I picked <laughs> L cars and not just because I'm a big nerd, uh, <laughs> but I wanted something that had a very distinctive style and to kind of see how that would look when we put it on top of our components and mm -hmm. the answer is great easy <laughs> like um <laughs> but they, yeah <laughs> whatever yeah. <laughs> as if <laughs> oh my goodness so okay lcars is like the ships like gooey essentially like to do things yeah. okay yeah, yeah, okay yeah. oh so excited to see it. <laughs> so, so these are clickable navs? So yep, curious, all but... of this on the side. These are these are actually our buttons. Um, and this is all, this is not, um, this is grid layout. Woo, <laughs> that was a sentence that struggled. Oh, so. okay. So you have to remind me because it was literally like, like as we go through, like let me know yeah. if it's a new thing, this release or 
like yeah if it's been around i'm i'm very unfamiliar with the react landscape so was grid layout this week this release or was it yep this? yeah so one of the things that i wanted to kind of take a look at um you can see in here oh my god this is our grid um within this kind of engineering page the layout that we've got here is um our own react grid layout and yeah. so this is this is the you just throw it's like a i'm going to use an angular term forgive me react fans is it like a direct <laughs> is it like a directive that you just like plop on the element and you're like here is like for the grid layout you're like i want div to have grid or is it a class or how did you how did you activate kendo grid layout <laughs> <laughs> so it is a component let me switch over um gosh <laughs> i am not i need to just share my whole window i think <laughs> you know i generally do that and then i will have either us on a different monitor or we just get you know we just get the mirroring effect of video on video and i'm fine <laughs> Yeah. Is this readable or do I need to figure out? Um, Avana, Avana had said font bump, but I don't, that was before you, I think that was like with the dev tools in, in the, the browser. So I don't know about this font size, uh, a tad, she said. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it looks good for me, but let, let us cool. know chat if I, you know, it can often be, that's the, one of the fun parts of streaming. Once you make the chat happy, there's like like one character on screen that fits because it's so <laughs> yeah, like, and then you have to like try to navigate through your code like that. So but no, it looks it looks wonderful. I'm loving it. Uh okay, so this is <laughs> you're gonna you I right, you're gonna have to prep yourself for some noobish questions, but show me, show me the the layout. <laughs> <laughs> so grid layout makes it super easy to handle all of this kind of layout structure without having to go fuss with the CSS at all. And yet when we jump over here, we can see that it's been translated incredibly smoothly into actual CSS grid. So we just create this grid layout object and here, not object, grid layout element. And here we can specify our gaps between our rows and our columns, uh, the height and the width. So mine are currently set to a percentage, so it's responsive. So no matter how little we get, it's just gonna keep getting littler. <laughs> I guess the part, so I I see how you ma mm -hmm. kind of made grid happen. Oh, then there's items. I was like, how do you and there's po items. populate it? Oh. Yep, so within the grid layout here inside, you place each of your items into one of these grid layout items. You, you know what flipping blows my mind about our dev team? <laughs> I, I mean, they, because I was poking around some of our new components prepping for the Angular stream tomorrow, and they implement, they, they like feature parity or component parity between the products. And so oftentimes <laughs> you'll see, like, you'll get one before I do, or I'll get one before you do. And, and we're trying to essentially build out um, similar libraries, but the frameworks and the, the needs of the community are different in certain ways, but it's incredible how tailored each experience is for that framework. Like I, it's not, I don't know, it's not like um, the same thing that's like with a sticker, you know, like now for React, like it's actually, <laughs> I'm looking at this and I'm right. like, oh my gosh, this is so Reacty. at least from like an Angular girl's perspective. I'm like, whoa, this is, <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I'm so curious now. I haven't had a chance to dig into the other libraries. I've obviously been pretty laser React focused <laughs> since no, getting here. I've been super impressed with how just very tailored it is. Like each team does a great job of implementing it for that framework. And sometimes like there might be like, I remember there's one time where there like someone was like, why isn't this feature there? And they had a really excellent reason why they left it out per our framework versus someone else's. And so every, every time I'm just blown away with the thoughtfulness. So looking into this grid layout inside of React, I'm like, oh, oh, I, oh, I see. I see how they did that there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's this nice. is, this is for, what page are we on again? Sorry. We're on. Oh no, that's good. This is for, 
engineering mm -hmm. with, over okay. here. So gotcha. we're looking right now at this square that's kind of outlined here in the inspect tool. And it's divided, mm -hmm. there are my three columns and my three rows. <laughs> so. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I, think, I think one of the things that I like most about this, and I'll be the first to say honestly, that I'm usually one who's like, just do it in CSS. Like, <laughs> but this is so readable. Like, mm. as we're kind of going through here, did you be able to just kind of skim what is here in the component and immediately see like, all right, here's my layout item. It's out of position of, you know, row one, column one. So like, you know, top corner, it spans two columns, spans one row. Done. All right, were <laughs> like, you just like, you know, real candidness with the audience here. A grid pro before, before, <laughs> before this because I personally like love yeah. flex, use the heck out of flex, but grid I still kind of back away slowly. The syntax like overwhelms mm -hmm. me. So, where did you conquer the grid before this? Ooh, I feel like pro is a strong word, but I am pretty comfy with it. Okay, um, okay. we'll have to talk. Maybe we'll have like a, a stream <laughs> where you, where you teach me how it stuck because I've been through. There's so many great tutorials for the CSS grid and understanding mm -hmm. it but there's just something about the syntax that seems like a blocker for me so this this is wonderful though it's very like you're saying it's very easy to understand what's going on and it kind of right. makes the grid a little bit more accessible it makes to... it a little more palatable it yeah. feels a little less intimidating to jump in because yeah like grid is super powerful but i think one of the drawbacks to that like you said with the syntax is there's so many different ways to configure it and there's a lot of kind of shorthand ways to write the same stuff <laughs> like <laughs> when you start digging into it uh i'm a big fan of um i think it's rachel andrew's examples she's got some incredible oh, yes. grid examples of oh but my goodness yes i've I actually went, met like hung out with her a couple times she's oh have you i was such, as, like as incredible <laughs> in person as on the web like one of those people because i've had a couple of like what web famous is that a thing i don't know web famous people who i was like <laughs> i'm meeting my hero today and some of them like kind of ended on like a flat note but she was not one she was like as glorious in person as online so <laughs> hey welcome everybody i see guacamole and we've got gary hi what does the new kindle grid layout above the material grid layout wait what was the question what does the new grid layout i'm confused can you understand the question i'm lost maybe have mm -hmm. above the material grid layout. I don't know the material grid layout. I'm assuming it's similar, like with using CSS grid under the covers. Do you know, Catherine? I have not used it. I'm actually it. not sure. Let me see. Um, that might be a good question for Carl. Yeah, might no, and because uh, I've, I personally have never used the material grid layout. And I think it would be different on the React side. So, but we will, we'll let you know if we can get an answer in the chat for you. And then, hey, guacamole, we've got some more people. I see our numbers are going up. So maybe a new introduction of what we're doing. Um, this is the R3 2021 release for Kendo <laughs> React. And we have the glorious, the wonderful, the brilliant Catherine Grayson Nance. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <She's> our, <laughs> new, <laughs> our new Devrel, and she is actually walking us through. Can you tell us about uh, this app for those of those people who joined late? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first off, hey, I'm Catherine. I'm the new uh, React Dev Advocate at Progress, and I'm super excited to be here and get to meet everyone. Um, we are taking a look through this deeply nerdy demo application that I've created <laughs> to look through the new kind of React components. And right now, we're taking a little bit of a deep dive into the grid layout. Mm. Oh, I love it. Um, so <laughs> is anything else on this page inside the grid layout part of this release as well? Like, did any of these bits come new? Yeah, actually, two of them. <laughs> so the heat map up here in the corner is one of our new components, as well as down here, we have the pivot grid. Which oh, that's the, you implemented That's the pivot, pivot grid. You did what now? <laughs> oh, I just stuck it in there. I'll level with you, I know. <laughs> I can't show off every single thing it can do. Um, it is. Okay. Was it like, because I'm imagining it was like its own component. It's not like, here's the Kendo React grid, and then you like 
add a little pivoty goodness like it's actually oh no it's its own entirely separate thing it needs a separate uh, kind of data structure that it pulls from it pulls from i will forget this so let me make sure that i get it right <laughs> from an olap service okay i i'm so curious has anyone in chat be real with us yeah ever used either a pivot grid or an OLAP service, like for the data structure? Like, cause I'm super curious, like if there's people, like, I swear if everyone in chat goes off, like me and oh, you are gonna you. just have, yeah. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna have to have a session where we learn all about the OLAP data because <laughs> I, whenever you were telling me about this, I was like, wait, what, that's a thing? Oh no, I don't know this thing. So yes, let yeah. us know in the chat if this is like for you and you're super excited, but um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ivana, sorry, if you are on a different platform, you don't see what we're laughing at. So I will try and pull. <laughs> the, it just looks like we're crazy, which is totally just fine as well. <laughs> also accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, guacamole. I have used a pivot grid long time ago in Access CD. Nice. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, mm -hmm. So the you said the React and then oh the the pivot grid and the the heat map. The heat Those map. Those were the two do two new buds on that page yeah so heat map is also really I cool don't, we need to talk to the dev that like implemented that rounded view of the cells with the green because it almost looks like it was made specifically for l cars you know like it, it looks so <laughs> it looks so good on your demo but show us yeah what what is it fit in surprisingly well that one took very little <laughs> <laughs> like there was almost no restyling to that at all <laughs> And we, we also got that if you're an Angular fan in the chat. We have a heat map <laughs> too now. So you are loved, you are welcome, and show up tomorrow and we'll talk about it. But show us the, the React version, <laughs> export default function heat map. Okay, is this inside? Man. Oh, yep. This is so index.js is like what renders the entire application or just what renders this page? I'm confused. Rendering this page. So okay. we're in engineering. Index I is see. wrapping the whole thing. I broke each of these out into their own kind of components to make sure the page wasn't too cluttered. So it was easy to dive in and get what you need and not have to <laughs> look through all the stuff that was for other things. So heat map is over here <laughs> in its own separate component. It uses our charts. Um, and so that's what you will return the charts here. And you just specify. That was a little confusing for me. I have this thing in Angular, like in my demo app, where I, I show off all the new components and I like to use a little breadcrumb to like, essentially so people know what, because sometimes mm -hmm. what, we have over a hundred plus components. So sometimes it can be hard to find what package it's nestled under to, you know, to download. And so that was a little confusing for me for the heat map one, because it is a component, but also it's a type under charts. So, <laughs> that's, so essentially you're using a chart because it is a yes. heat map chart. And then it's, that's, you can see on line 33, she specified which type, but um, which is why of course the charts are a dependency of it. So that makes sense. <laughs> yep. And then uh, as you noted, our lovely color and our rounded rectangles, that stuff gets specified here. That was in the demo, so I was very lucky. I didn't have to change anything, but you could. Oh, okay. <laughs> change, can you change it to circle? I think circle's a thing on type. I like watch Ooh, is this it? whole thing blow up. Yes. <laughs> I was playing <laughs> around with circle and I was like, it is. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not. The, it's maybe we'll keep it. <laughs> the, <laughs> the other thing was um, the color. So mm -hmm. the color, apparently, at least on the Angular side, you can pass like whatever you want there. Like even uh, like like you could say like lime green, like the yeah, hot pink. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. And then it, yeah, it totally. <laughs> so and can you explain like what it's doing with the color? Because I'm pretty sure white is like the lowest value, right? It's like. Right. So the kind of the darker, the higher saturation, mm. the color. Uh, oop, are you still there? I, I am. Them. Thing. I see you. Wow. Well, I mean, cool. I see you in a frozen. Oh, you're back. Ooh. Okay, cool. Everything panicked over here. Don't know why. <laughs> it's because we went with circles and your browser was like, I can't handle mm -hmm. circles. <laughs> no, 
one step too far. <laughs> anyway, yes, white <laughs> indicates there's been nothing logged on that day. A darker okay. saturation or darker color will show higher density. So we okay. can hop over heat map pulls from this style of data structure, which uh, like your first number is going to be, I think your X and your second is your Y. Mm. Watch me have that backwards. And then this number, your third one, is uh, the value for like the color scale value. or something. It's like the number of times. So a heat map in general is logging like the number of times that something happened, you know, uh, okay. like okay. the GitHub contribution one is a really easy one to look at because it's logging. How many times did you contribute, you know, on this day? How many times did you push something? So I see, I, I was like Googling heat maps yesterday and I found I, I did not mean to be this meta, but it was like heat maps of heat indexes. And I was like, I'm pretty sure people do other data inside of heat. Yes. Maps. So I, I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad you've confirmed that. Okay. So you have your data as that and you're plugging it in and then you showed those different things where you can do color and the shape. And, right. So um, if you were to bump this one up to something really high, like 30, we see that top box? corner get really dark. Oh, but really not only up. that, but it like washes everything else out based on that one data point. Right. Because it's giving you everything in relation. <laughs> so it's a quick way to skim and see where numbers are density. So with the temperature one, obviously, you probably, if you had somewhere where you were up hitting in the like, you know, over 100 degrees every day, <laughs> those would be super dark. Quick, random international math for you. Oh, no, uh, that's not going to go well. Fahrenheit, I'm Googling. Mm. Uh, <laughs> 37 above 37 i always because we have a huge international audience and so i always forget with things like that i like it's above 37 yes i would not have. <laughs> actually does the decimal matter 37.7 do, do people speak in decimals with the temperatures like like i mean we hear we can say it but it doesn't really if we say 100 like you just you know that's flipping hot but since your right. points are so much smaller sorry i'm going off on a tangent ivana said <laughs> nope we have confirmation <laughs> that we can just say 37 awesome <laughs> oh i, I imagine that only it. matters when you're really trying to prove a point like <laughs> out here it is 38.7 <laughs> it's disgusting today <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's the only time we pull that out here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Excel has pivot tables. Cindy just said that she can make pivot tables in Excel. Does Did she know about this? Them. Is that a thing? Mm. Apparently that's a yeah, thing. I, I knew those existed in Excel. Oh, okay. Of course you but did. You Everyone they're... knows Excel so much better than me. Oh, am like, you can put numbers <laughs> in columns. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Everyone knows about it. Everyone is confirming and has used, apparently the pivots in the Excel. Okay. So that makes sense why it's like an exciting new thing like, that we're bringing over because it's not something we made up, right? Other no, people it is not. <laughs> <laughs> that much I do know what it does specifically, uh, the context in which you would use it. <laughs> uh, Zelly Faces, aka Carl, answered uh, the grid layout question, which I was super curious to help with the grid layout question. The components will be fairly similar between Kinder React and Materials implementation. Uh, this was a layout specific component that we received a few feature requests. So we added it in to help provide more components out of the box with Kindo React. So I, I, I know that's a, it's a pertinent question, not only because uh, quite a few people use material along with Kindo React, but also it's like one of the themes, you know, that we like support and like try to like match alongside. So um, I'm glad that question was brought up. Thanks, Gray. Yeah. <laughs> At home. <laughs> yeah, the body temperature one is big too. <laughs> I feel like that is the only time I ever hear it. Mm, right? The like, you, whatever. 98.6. <laughs> I just imagine in Celsius it would need to be even more so just because you've got so many. I mean, you know, we've got one through 100 here and you've got one through 37. So <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> Oh, I love it. They do um, the negatives though, right? When it's below freezing and we don't. 
Right, but there's something there about how it logically makes sense. Somebody who's very mathy told me this once, like how their scale makes more sense than our scale. <laughs> Ivana's like, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I think it has to do with like the freezing point or something. Like, right, makes the freezing sense. point there is zero, right? Oh, like it's just right. So it gives you a nice, zero. yeah. No, that actually is very. <laughs> That's very nice. I kind of am a little jealous of that. <laughs> right. It does make a lot of sense as opposed to 30, 32. Oh, no. <laughs> what are doing? No, qu no quizzes, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, around there. I love there, that we, <laughs> we immediately got ourselves into a conversation that neither of us knew anything about. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, here, here we Gary. <laughs> Gary said, and boiling is 100. That was the other side of it. Yeah, they're That's very so beautiful. It seems like, yeah, one one day. One day I will learn this system, Gary. <laughs> it does oh, make sense. It's so a little it's bit ridiculous that we don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So tell me some more. Tell me some more bits. Show me around some more. I'm so excited. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very react new. So this is all, it's a whole new world. No, it is all good. Um, let's see, what shall we, let's take a look at our, this is a, uh, an unfinished <laughs> piece of the demo for me, but it does show off our components. <laughs> so <laughs> those parts implemented correctly. Can't actually search the database yet. I'll get there. I, just, I want you to know we've started a war in chat. <laughs> <laughs> Between oh. Kelvin and metric, I, I yeah, I don't, um, I didn't see it going there, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Kelvin's so the one that's really popular with like scientists, right? That's like a standard, probably is the most accurate. Uh, uh huh, uh huh. The mm -hmm. one that I know the least about, unfortunately. Yeah, it seems, it seems like a bad, poor planning on the <laughs> <laughs> on the school systems, you know, like, I feel like we should have just stuck with one, but I get it. It's kind of like the same with programming. We really can't complain about, you know, the systems in which we measure things and how there's so many of them because we can't even agree Honestly, on. True. I mean, like, what JavaScript framework do you use, right? Like, so, I mean, it makes sense but, uh, looking at it. There's at least, like, three or four <laughs> ways to set a font size, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, I did. I <laughs> did a stream one time and I was like, okay, I want to just show you why animating in CSS can be so overwhelming. And we, we, like, I just picked a random animation. It was very basic. And I was like, let's find literally every single way you can do this. Even things like animating the padding to like make it happen, you know, like really weird things. That you shouldn't. <laughs> and there's so many ways. So no, I feel your pain, everyone. But <laughs> no. So you said this is for searching. What? Tell me again. Sorry. Do the introductory. I missed it. So this actually has a few of our components snuck in. Our breadcrumbs are up here, and you can kind of see them populate as we move through it. Our buttons here are organized um, with our stack layout. <laughs> That's facing them. We've got our update to our tooltip on the SVG over here. <laughs> and when we dig in a little bit lower, we've got our multi-select tree hanging out over here oh my gosh, oh my gosh. that was that was do you so anything many... right now <laughs> yeah no <laughs> no. <laughs> no you can use all these components you can't select anything can't do anything with it but the joy of clicking on them absolutely yeah but there. <laughs> like you have them live in the page and there's yes. like 20 of them all stacked on top of each other that was awesome okay there are <laughs> so there was breadcrumbs there was um the tree view uh and then the tooltip what was so what was the tooltip thing what was that feature oh no so tooltip one of our improvements oh no sorry oh, no. it froze for a second could have been on my end only but i think we're good to go so people in the chat if no we're good, i think, it... I, think, I, think <laughs> we're still, I mean we still got the live ticker so i think we're fine i think this is we're just gonna keep talking yeah and, we're gonna keep going yeah. maybe someone let us know <laughs> if we're all alone in the world but yeah um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so a couple of these are not new components, but existing components that got upgrades. <laughs> yes. <laughs> One of which is our tooltip, which now works with SVGs. So you can see here, I've got an SVG 
with a tool too. <laughs> Not a whole lot to dive deep into there. I see. I thought you were but saying like they built the tooltip with SVG or something. I was like, what is happening? Okay. Yeah, so you. we've got whoops, support. Dive in here. There we go. Support for SVG elements. I so, see. How do you? Which is usually important. How do you? It works. Add it. Ooh. <laughs> I wasn't sure where that question was going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how, how do you actually get that SVG on that tooltip? To show us the, the goods. So this is a great one because, whoops, I'm in the wrong section. Where is this? <laughs> I've lost in my own application. Here I know, in your own <laughs> app that you built in like 24 hours. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where am I? What year is it? <laughs> So you are in, see if people are following along in the app data and then just enter the data. Is that, do you call those components or is that not a component? Can you? It's all, yeah. Components all the way down. Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> Inside the, I was like, I was like, that looks like a component with a JavaScript file. So I'm just going to call it a component. Awesome. Yep. Okay. So inside Absolutely. the data component. Okay. Components and components and components. <laughs> <laughs> so with this one, you can see we'll tackle a couple of, uh, things here. We've got our stack layout component here. And that's handling our horizontal alignment of everything on the page. So if we take a look here, we can see this. Let's do a little inspect. And this is basically a Flexbox equivalent, which is awesome. <laughs> and in the same way that our grid layout makes tackling CSS grid a little bit easier, our stack layout makes tackling Flex a little bit easier. Uh, and that's what we've got organizing this page. So we've got our element okay. here. And just like, obviously, with flex, you can nest. So we've got a flex layout here inside our larger flex layout. I it's love flex. Yeah. I don't know how we live without it. I mean, I, I, so I, rem I remember floats, but like, <laughs> do you remember floats, Catherine? Okay, we're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, a real dark moment there. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to like give everyone a tummy ache, you know, this early on in the day or this late in the day, depending on where you are. So sorry for bringing up floats. I love you all. <laughs> You're rough time. What it used to be like a joke to talk about how hard it was to vertically center something. Like, <laughs> I know. I I feel so spoiled. Like with especially even with like, have you seen some of the new CSS four things coming out? I'm like, I. I'm I'm a little yeah. worried for for my sass, my love of sass. Do you love sass? Are you a sass lover? I love sass. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Woo! <laughs> Our friendship. I'm saying, and that's <laughs> everything in here is sass. <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I didn't see. Show me. Okay, I'm confused. We're in a JavaScript file. Explain yourself. What? Oh no, no. Sorry, I just meant all of the styles oh, in this right application there. written in sass. Gotcha, gotcha. You weren't actually pointing at the. The JavaScript file. No, I, I was pointing over here in I the menu, it. which is admittedly not intuitive. <laughs> so once CSS4 comes out and nesting is a thing, will you still use oh, that? Yes, until there's a replacement for mixins. Yes, that's my <laughs> so, <laughs> I do love. I will say I reach for it less often than I used to. I think there's no need to like bulk up a project if you don't have to, especially CSS getting. Uh, native variables was a huge jump yeah. to be able to do that without needing another library. Incredible. <laughs> no, and so. I can see the value between like, because, you know, I was talking to people at um, KCDC last week and they're asking about the difference between them. And I can still like I can see the value of both. And so it's it's hard yeah. for me um, to I, I used to use coffee script. I'm going to go ahead and own up to that. And yeah. when, JavaScript, <laughs> when JavaScript started rolling in th certain features of CoffeeScript, it was kind of like the, you know, the death toll of it. And so that's yeah. when I saw that in CSS4, I was like, but I love you, Sass. Please don't die on me. So we'll see. Hopefully, I mean, you're yeah. right. I, I I would love it if we had, I don't even know if that's on the, the horizon, but I would love mix and support. So <laughs> yeah, in general, I think it's a good thing to mm. be able to have more of it baked in automatically in vanilla CSS and to have yeah, to add it, less things. It's I'm glad so, like, Sass is there. <laughs> 
<laughs> if you are a SaaS user and you're using Kendo UI, it's really, really freaking cool. Like the customizing you can do um, with our themes. I love it. And it's only getting more powerful um, as, as we roll on. So I'm excited. Yeah. Shall we take a peek at that? Can I, can I branch yes. this off? <laughs> Show me. <laughs> <laughs> You never made so, me happier than when you open that folder. <laughs> <laughs> Into the style folder. Yeah, that's where I'd prefer to hang out all the time. <laughs> so, as you can see, what's going on over here, at least, yeah, slightly a little bit different than our default themes. <laughs> you know, our, but our buttons have never looked that good, right? Like, because you said yeah. those are our buttons on the nav, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Buttons in the nav, buttons over here. Yeah. buttons all the way down so um but it was actually way easier than i kind of anticipated to get everything styled the way i wanted everything obviously very round <laughs> very different colored everything in the different font you know the, the uppercase um but i was able to walk through using our theme builder mm. which made it crazy easy let me pop that up So we have this incredible theme builder that will spit things out in SAS, of course. <laughs> and you can start with any one of our kind of basic themes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then walk through, if you need all the components, choose all the components. Uh, and then it gives you this opportunity to kind of go through and see what everything will look like uh, to change all the colors. Um, so we'll steal some colors from over here. <laughs> and swap them which i've done this before without like theme builder and um it can be a little slow going whenever you're trying to find the exact variable that you mean like that you're right. you know that you're trying to specify so this is and that's all powerful. there too if you do want to like dig in we have all of the variables uh listed on the website somewhere and you can do it that way and that's valid but this was so <laughs> much easier and it, it's easier to see it all kind of in one place and be able to update everything super quick um, and get a feel for what it will all look like on the page together. That helped me a lot kind of from a design perspective. Mm. And, and then you you said you just exported it and used it? Yep, download, um, there's a theme name. It'll download the zip file. <laughs> Peek into my downloads folder. <laughs> and. <laughs> Oh, actually, you've got like pink icons. We're going to have to talk. I don't know how you got the, is that just like a system uh, preference? Everything. Yeah. Like, I love it. You, okay. should see my, you should see my terminal. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see it right now, please. She Did you make this cute? theme? Did you make it? In was iTerm, you? yeah. Oh, okay, uh -huh. iTerm. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, chat. We love you all too. But, you know, we might have to have a show on how to just upgrade your life with things like, you know, finder colors and terminal colors. But yes, it's beautiful. I feel like if I have to stare at it all day, the least it could be is cute, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's so many devs who like have to work on really painful apps and they're like, yeah, yeah, the least it yeah. could be is cute, but it's not. And I stare at it all day. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. <laughs> so you download the themes folder and you get a lot of info here, Jason. So you get just these three. So this is all. Mm. These are what you get. This theme folder okay. that has uh, theme data in a JSON file, a compiled CSS file, and a SAS file. And so over here, these are the ones that I did for LPARs. And so you can see here is the entirety of the like applied compiled CSS. So in React, though, how do you how do you utilize I'm, that style sheet? So I'm using this uh, SAS file. I left the others in kind of for reference, mm -hmm. but I'm pulling it in. This is my high level, like global style sheet, global styles. Thank you. Global could not get to that word. <laughs> so uh, I'm just importing it up here along with my font. And then I've got a couple of variables that I set for just like random little stuff and then kind of my high level body in each one. But otherwise it's just taking all of the styles right out of that SAS file 
This demo is such a gold mine, like for people <laughs> who want to up their React like UI game. Like it's so cool because you're dem demonstrating like how to use a custom theme with Gendo UI and then all of like our new components and features. Like I love this. Thank you for building this. It's very um it's very intimidating. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she's so good at life. I got to get better. You ever have those moments where you're like with someone, you're like, yep, make a note of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, but seriously, I, I see. I see there. I see you're using uh, custom properties there in your root uh, yeah, and, not, yeah. and not sassy variables. So is, there, is there a reason? Because yeah, I started off doing this with uh, vanilla CSS. So in general, uh, my approach is start low, and when you find that you need something, uh, add it in. So I started this to see if I could do it, just yeah. with vanilla CSS, and ah. it was just starting. Yeah, and then layered layer. it yeah. in as you went. I love that. All right. At this point, I could go back and probably should go back and update them to SAS variables just for like ease of use and, and continuity. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's why they are the way they are. <laughs> I I think it's so valuable sometimes for people who are newer in the CSS world to be able to see both. So I've loved that it's there and, yeah. and on the, it's on the repo now, right? Yeah. Yes. It's yep. pushed up. Yeah. It's all there. But cool. no, in general, I'm a big, uh, strong believer in not picking one tool and using it to solve everything. Like <laughs> hammer's no, great when you need that. a hammer. It shouldn't be <laughs> what you reach for, <laughs> for everything. <laughs> SAS is that way too. Awesome as it is. You don't need it. I use it, <laughs> but I needed it. So. <laughs> but you're like, but it's, it's there, and I needed it. But it, it. turns out <laughs> I'm there, I needed it. So. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it. So, are you are you using grid layout here too? Is that what? No, so no, that's all flex. You said this is all flex. I will say that this, the frame that handles uh, kind of the the sidebar with the menu and all of that, is actually good old school CSS grid. Because uh, I kind of wanted to show that it doesn't matter. You can't tell. It looks the same. It does the same stuff. You can do it old school. You can do it new school. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just a question of what's easier to you. And the output is going to be the same when you inspect it. And I think that's really one of the coolest parts. I think a lot of things uh, that try to like generate CSS can create some stuff that's pretty weird. And ours really does not. And that's to be able to go in and inspect it and troubleshoot it that way makes it like way, way easier. <laughs> no, it's super valuable. I'm always very proud of our components for that reason. Um, it's just yeah. bringing it alongside your application um, is super friendly, nice. Uh, I've, I've used some frameworks that were not, that were very aggressive. And so it's, right. it's beautiful to see it, it done well. So thank you team, if you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes this in here is flex using our stack layout okay, okay. so flex using got, our stack layout you lost me there stack layout so stack layout is one of our new components uh in this release and in the same way that our grid layout handles css grid for you our stack layout will handle flex for you Let that's a thing talk. What? That is a thing. What? <laughs> oh. I'm in the wrong thing. <laughs> Once again, lost in my own application. There we so go. <laughs> much newness. So, yeah. Oh my word. Oh, so stack this layout. little bit you can see how it's wrapped in stack what? layout. Where you can set an orientation that will kind of say that's your like um, like your flex direction, basically, whether you're doing column or a row. Uh, and then the alignment is your uh, like justify content align items. So you can align uh, at the start, center, end, and that's your kind of like start, like then. Um, and then vertical, you have top, middle, and bottom. So. Okay, so stack layout. Oh, wait, I'm confused. So it's similar to grid layout in the fact that you define these basic bits up front on the outer element yes but then there's no like stack layout item because everything's just flowing around in the middle right like or is there a stack layout? Right. there's not okay no cool. there's not an item in the same way so okay. um 
it's kind of the same way, again, when you look at kind of how the CSS is working kind of on the flip side. Um, when you set your grid styles, you're setting kind of your like high level styles for the container of the grid, but then you are setting styles on each like div or item uh, to determine where it should be placed in the grid. Uh, and that's kind of just at a CSS level. One of the big differences between using grid and using Flexbox is grid allows you to place something kind of specifically within the grid and flex is just going to flow naturally with whatever's inside. So in the same way with flex, you're just saying, whatever you throw in here, you know, align it horizontally and, you know, space it evenly and align them all to the top, you know, uh, and you don't have to set that kind of individual style on each element. <laughs> I, I'm amazed because it's just, it's the same with grid, like it's making it very accessible. And I know sometimes people might not have the access to the style sheet side of life, like it's depending on how large your team is. And so um, in order to be able to utilize things like this, I know it was important to make it a component. So I am very impressed and I can't, how many, do you know the total like of components that were released for like, how many? Um, so many? I think we have seven new components and okay. then another four or five, I think with updates. So it was a really big release. Yeah. Like, it was really impressive. <laughs> oh, we should, I want to, I want to put this up. We should talk. So we are doing webinars next week um, that you can mm -hmm. register for that will go into um, just more detail for each component or each feature that was added per product. And so like me, Catherine and Carl covering, um, I think it's a three hour webinar. So you can tune into the piece if you, if you want all the JavaScript updates or if you just want the React ones, but um, yes, register right there. That's the link on the screen um, that lovely Nightbot's giving us. And I'm actually gonna put the ticker up. I think this is it, a little slum, maybe. I think we have a ticker somewhere. I'll find it in a sec. But, um, because we have chat commands, so you can pull those up if you want. But uh, we will, next week, uh, what day is it next week? Do you know, Catherine? I feel like I should know this. Hmm. Um, when? It is, Tuesday? It is the 28th. Aha! The, 28th. the React one is the 28th. Oh, wait. Whichever day that is. No. <laughs> no. No, Mona we're all 30. wrong. <laughs> no. no. She's the 28th. She's <laughs> You're like the only one on the team with dates. I'm like, 28th. Yes. So it's 28th. Sure if, you, it's 28th. if you'd like to <laughs> go into further detail. It'll be a fun webinar. Uh, we usually do them... Uh, like live from the studio, um, but we'll be doing them uh, remotely this time, hopefully in the spring for our next release. We'll be back in the studio and it'll be a lot of fun, but check it out. Uh, click, the <laughs> <laughs> click the link. Don't listen to us. I know, right? Like, the <laughs> I don't know. Like there's so many times, like I'll look over at my husband and I'm like, the day and he's like, I don't, I don't know. Like it's all blending mm -hmm. now. Like it's... <laughs> Especially when, when you work from home, all of those like external things. You're gone. lucky that I know the month, right? Like, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but yes, we'll go into during the webinar all of the details. Today we're doing um, just a couple, and and so yes, come back, check it out. Um, and I think uh, I wanted. To, I had another question. Can you show me the page on the what's new in Kendo React? I feel like. Yeah. There was something else that I was like, oh man, that's, I I think it was just so overwhelming. There are so many things that I was like, I don't know how to keep up. So Wait, did you get stuff. a Gantt too? Or no, that was new features on the? New we component. have a Gantt, it got an upgrade. If I oh. remember correctly. Yeah. So there we go. Oh. <laughs> I was like, why am oh, I just accessibility rough. improvements. I remember reading about that, that there were yeah. accessibility improvements to certain things. So yeah, uh, our data grid, our Gantt chart, and our true list all got some accessibility improvements, um, which will improve the way that they interact with screen readers, which is really fantastic. <laughs> uh, wait, tree list. Was that new, this release? Or was it a, tr what was, what was no. the new one? No. It was uh, the multi select tree. So you multi select were, tree. Okay. Like, both tree like. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, I no, love slightly it. slightly different. Uh, okay. But our game chart also got uh, another improvement in terms of range selection and multiple cell selection. So yeah, we just yeah. got the Gantt chart. Oh my God, you implemented it! Oh, <laughs> 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 everything, 
Okay. Wow. So, so you can select oh. cells. Okay. So you can now select individual cells, or you can sweep select multiple cells. I'm glad you're showing this because the Angular side of life, Angular for Kendo UI, got um, the Gantt this release as well, and so I was looking into it and trying to use it, and I was surprised because I don't know why I thought it would be uh, kind of like you add, you know, a Gantt directive to your chart, but it's its own component. It's, it's a standalone component, whole thing. right? And yeah. and so, will you show how you like implemented this in your? I was gonna say yeah. template, but I don't think that's the right React word. Uh, in your yeah, JSX component, <laughs> 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 like templates. Yeah, it's word. a little bit different because Angular really splits that out very strongly. That was something that I had to adjust to for the last year and a half before I took this job. You say effort. adjust. You say adjust to like you don't believe it's the right way. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we must I was talk. Strong. We must have strong, strong bias, <laughs> which is why I'm back, not just coding, but advocating <laughs> for React. Oh, uh, you're in the right no, place. But... This is the this is the React, you know, <laughs> channel. So I just I don't get it. I I'm I'm a lover of my like. It kind of makes me feel claustrophobic. Like, look at all these buds touching up against each other in this one file. Is, <laughs> yeah, everything is right up in there uh, uh so you but have that forever, the other way around to be like oh, I, would to want do the... like, I want to just like write a little function I'm like why can't i just i just want a little bit of javascript right here why can't i just throw it in the template and they're like no 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 oh I'm like, don't do I, that here. <laughs> I, I really want to like pull the audience have you ever just said i just need a little bit of javascript right here in my template like That's right yeah <laughs> who hasn't no. i don't pipe things I, no <laughs> Oh God, I love it. I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> so you, this is in your, we're in the schedule component? So yeah, this is okay. in the schedule component, uh, which is this page here, oh, okay. which is my fake uh, schedule preparing for a Klingon ambassadorial visit. <laughs> so. Wait, you, you changed the data? Oh my gosh, I'm yeah. so overwhelmed. You're going to have to teach me everything right now. All of it. I need to know. Okay. How, how does the Gantt work? <laughs> Buckle up. <laughs> so the Gantt pulls from a, a data file <laughs> that is kind of structured uh, in this kind of nested way, which makes sense with the Gantt in terms of you know what is dependent on other things. Mm -hmm. So things kind of nest. You have titles and IDs, start and end dates. Um, if you're doing percentages complete, you can include that, whether or not it begins in the expanded position. And then if it has children, you can just nest a little deeper and start the whole thing over. <laughs> so you can see those over here. These guys are what we're looking at and they're nested or start and kind of end dates specified here and the percentages that uh, determines what shaded was not. <laughs> oh no, I'm not prepared. I barely speak any Klingon. I'm only like two percent through the Duolingo modules. <laughs> so. Did you just say the words I barely speak any Klingon? AKA I speak some Klingon. Like I what? <laughs> not <happen>? really. <laughs> <laughs> like okay, you, know, you you can actually learn it as a language on Duolingo. It's a real, it is a real language. Oh, like it is a I don't know if I'm more shocked by language. the intel I'm receiving or who's giving me the intel. Like, <laughs> I love it. I am so happy and pleased to meet your nerdy side. Hello, nerdy cat. <laughs> I'm so happy that like you, it's beautiful. I, I, so Klingon, this give me a dumb one, is belonging to the Star Treks. Yes? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> okay, all of this cool. is. Okay, cool. I was like, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> the same universe. I, so I think I tried. I really did try because I, well, I love all fantasy. Well, we'll have to try again. No, okay, okay. I'm like when I, <laughs> I'm well, I started the binge, right? And you do start okay. at the beginning as one does with a binge, and then you're looking at it and you're like, 
This is really old. And it was is it is it like one of those Doctor Who moments where you just have to like get past the first few seasons like and then it gets better or but well, with both of those, I feel like the important question is, how beginning is the beginning? Oh, <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. No, I did not start like, like black and white Doctor Who's. So I did not do that with yeah. my life. So you're saying there's a better place to start. We will talk and we I will, will tweet talk. about it. <laughs> yeah. In, in so everyone can know. Because I'm also admittedly a huge, huge Doctor Who fan. <laughs> so... We could like I we're, we're planning like secretly no one hold us to this but like you can totally hold us to this uh, to do a UI stream that we both like work on together and that could be really fun to have like a Doctor Who app you know that like because <laughs> there I was love, some very very real conversation with me and Carl when we were planning for this live stream about whether or not we should show up in uniform. <laughs> You both have stuff. uniforms? Oh my gosh, I, I really got to get... Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> okay, Carl, we're going to need to know in the chat. Do you actually have a uniform? <laughs> also, did you make yours? Oh, no. No, I purchased Oh, God. It. Okay, cool. Because I was like, this is going to be... Like, there's no way. Like, I've made one outfit, and it was for Eris from so Destiny. Hard. It yeah. is it's a lot of work and I like barely pulled it off. So I, I was like, dang, I got a lot to learn. <laughs> I, have, I have a uniform Amazon list to prepare for this, but I didn't pull the trigger yet. <laughs> you might have to. And we might all have to discuss who we're dressing up as because it'd be really sad if we had the exact same outfit. But we'll we'll plan. We'll coordinate. But no. So <laughs> I, I definitely want to get into Star Trek more. And who knows? twitch you might see us do a doctor who app as we teach you fun ui things in the future yeah. but this on the yes. gantt you were showing us data hierarchy structure mm -hmm. how that plugs did you show how that plugs in like because it's like just a property where you're like data equals data yeah property. it really is you're just gonna import it here <laughs> okay. import your data from data <laughs> and then um it just gets plugged in here so it gets fed into some of it the dependency data it's fed into state um because that gets changed based on how or when you filter okay so. tell tell me the truth chat have you ever seen slash used a gantt in the wild because before this, yeah. uh, well, it was a couple of releases ago, <laughs> one of my fellow coworkers got the Gantt and that was the first time I'd, I'd ever even heard the word. And it's very specific, right? Like for like workflow, timeline based, like it, yeah. projects kind of thing. Like it's, it's, it's a very specific component. So I'm very curious, like how many people have used them before in the past? Because I love that you made, <laughs> that you made custom data for this. It's amazing. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Zelly is saying it's huge for project management. Okay. Yeah. The Gantt was interesting because it's one of those I had used a lot in terms of people had sent me Gantt charts. Oh, <laughs> so that I could... You have. You've seen them in the wild then. I've seen them and I've okay. used them, but I never built one. So that was really interesting. But yeah, no, definitely in terms of uh, like project managers have sent me Gantt charts and been like, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like... <laughs> Like the data point on the, like the timeline, yeah. like you that's... do this part. Yeah, oh. you're over here. <laughs> like... Okay, can you actually show me real quick? So on the Gantt, you've got there's too many bars. I'm overwhelmed. Explain what I'm looking at. You've got so the top bar general, that's the whole project. Yep, and then uh, generally ones that encompass other ones. You'll see kind of have this like notched thing, and so then tasks. Uh, underneath are these kind of bubbles. And if one task needs to be completed before another task can be begun, then they're connected in this way. Okay, I had so you can I feel really, really special. Because again, we got the Gantt, this, this release, the Angular Peoples. And I'm looking at it and I'm trying to implement it and I did not realize the data on the, are you tell, mm, this is gonna sound really stupid. Is the data on the left relational to like the row? So like, that's the label for that item? Yeah, kind so, of. right, so, like, um, yes, I'm trying to think about the right way to, like, I, I it looks like, ever answer this? but yeah, like so very top one, is that the whole name of the project? Yeah, that yep. one. Yeah, uh, okay. So, yeah, that's going to be what it 
uh, encompasses the whole thing. And that's kind of, you have a start date and an end date and you can see it kind of like brackets everything inside oh, of you it. You cleared so much up. You don't even under, like the first time I saw <laughs> it, I thought, oh, there's a chart of data on one side and then there's a random like workflow over here. I had no idea uh, they relate, like that they were related yeah. to each other. So this is oh kind of summarizing gosh. Like this starts. I think it I might actually it. be easier to kind of grok with one that's not sci-fi because the tasks are stuff that we understand. So like, right, research has to happen before design has to happen for implementation. And oh, then even here, like market oh my research. God, the has timeline to is this way. I thought the timeline, the timeline's both directions. Ah! Yeah. Gant has so, overwhelmed again. <laughs> right. So you can kind of scroll down and you see the dates move. Okay. But then also it's easier to visualize the flow of one thing that needs to happen before I another. I see. Now, this, do, this really might be shines. way too deep into the Gantt folklore. But is the Gantt... <laughs> <laughs> Canonical Gantt. <laughs> is, is the Gantt... Because I always thought the Gantt was like the actual flow over on the right side of the screen. Like, mm -hmm. is the Gantt the whole thing, though? Or is the, because, yeah. Mm, yeah, okay. I mean, I feel... it's all kind of part and parcel, like. Okay. You would I never think, like, ship most the right, think of it, okay. Yeah. Uh... yeah, no, I mean, you can, you can set which columns are visible. Uh, and in fact, Oh, you do? Somewhere in here. I must see. Yeah, I said that without knowing exactly where <laughs> in the code. Yeah. I said that here. Right, so here's my columns. Right. Wise and words, so, Ivana. Wise words. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> so here I've decided that it's most useful to show the title, the start date, and the end date. But I could show any of the other data here. Or, no. Where's my... Where's my Gantt data? <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> uh, data dot, nope, that's not Schedule. it. Schedule, there. I could show any of this. We could create a column that showed the percent complete. Or we could create a column uh, if we had other data, the ID. We could show all of that. We could add it to our columns. I keep losing my own stuff. What an embarrassment. It's a okay. big app you've already in, like, I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, so we could say we want the ID. Um, that doesn't need a date format because it's an ID. And that'll add a column here oh, that okay. shows us the ID number. Nice. If that's helpful. So that might be something like maybe that connects to a Jira ticket or something in the real world. <laughs> I I even heard that they're like, like, and maybe this was just my Gantt and not your Gantt, because I know not all Gantts are created equal, but I heard there was like a way to show, like it shows if something's behind, I think, like in the project or I think, I think that was a feature. So I, I'm just, this component is robust. <laughs> yeah. I do think that's true. I'm not a hundred percent. Sorting, filtering, task types. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at all that. Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, flat data. I was trying to see if there was a way to filter by like overdue or if it saves. I'm sure it does. Oh, no. That might be one that we throw uh, <laughs> backstage. I know, <laughs> yeah. Shows. Carl, let us know if I just made that up, but oh. I'm pretty sure. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, I took it off. Oh, that no. was cracking me up. <laughs> that was cracking me up. <laughs> Uh, I love a good one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you'll just shake your dusty stick at it. <laughs> you bet. That's a, that's a sign of support. <laughs> oh, wait, it is? I thought it was a, a, a shaming. Like, I will not I mean, laugh at your punny joke. <laughs> it's a, yes. I just like puns. <laughs> so personally, if it's bad enough for me to dusty stick, that means it was a really good pun. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. And Ed, the he's on our DevRel team. He is the king of the dad jokes. So we, we, we usually are in, never in short supply of said puns. So <laughs> yeah, there's um, a question for the audience. How many of y'all knew about the dusty stick? Because I mm. joined this team, and mm. before I had contributed anything of value, I had already unfortunately established myself as the aggressive dusty stick emoter i think <laughs> i think that was your first point of value added right it was like the, the awareness of like, said dusty stick i think i think you should show everyone 
like if you can like pull it up in the on the web browser or something like so that oh. they know what we're talking about cuz we sound um, uh, um I'm, oh, I just the dusty stick on the dusty stick. I have to admit, I love it. Yes, this yeah, is we. Show. It's it's um. So for those of you who are like absolutely lost, and I did not know this was an emoji. There's it a Slack is, emoji that it looks like a that looks like a dusty stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very like boring. <laughs> I just wanna I just wanna Look have a, a coffee with the Stunning. the OG <laughs> like the OG creator. I just wanna. Just to, you know, like pick their brain about what was going on in their life at this moment. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. There's not any like formal definition of how to use the dusty stick. There's not? Oh. It's, I don't think so. I mean, there's, there's, there's like thought pieces like the one that I shared with y'all. <laughs> Hot takes, <laughs> if you will. Hot takes. Oh, I think but. we need to sne sneak it into our demo apps somehow. Just need to absolutely yeah, to be there. <laughs> Slack is full of weird little stuff. Like, do you know you can set your notification sound uh, to a person saying hummus? <laughs> I did not oh, create the dozens. No, I one hundred percent drove my husband crazy. We have a joint office because I set one of my I set each Slack channel to their own noise, and one of them, oh, the sad. most common one, was hummus because I just I made me laugh so hard. And it's like, just like this really quick, like hummus, like it's yeah. sound and it's just the best. So if you <laughs> want to really bother someone in your workspace, <laughs> enable hummus mode. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, we got, we got some deeds. Seeing what's oh, behind nice. on time ahead of schedule is actually a feature. It's not yet um, added. Okay. 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 Uh, gotcha. We've called this actual. Basically, the current Gantt iteration shows planned items. There's a feature in the jQuery edition that allows you to toggle between planned and actual. Oh, this can be added to React or Angular in the future if folks are looking for it, which is a great segue to, um, I, I, I keep getting these frozen moments. Hello. Hello, are you there? Did I lose you all forever? Let me know if I'm still here. We're still here. Okay. Uh, did I lose Catherine or did nice. I, are we here? Are you there? Catherine, are you there? I am here. I lost y'all for a minute and that was definitely on my side. Okay. <laughs> I just it went silent and I was like, I don't know if I'm here or if she's here. I don't know who's was, still here. Because <laughs> no, essentially that was, a, if we, that was a Catherine if, problem. <laughs> if we both I believe if we both drop, the stream will keep going. So I didn't know who was Sorry, guys. I totally just, um, I was saying that um, that segues beautifully uh, to if there is a feature or a component that you really, really want. Can we get that link in the chat from some beautiful person? Um, then I absolutely recommend that you head on over there and give a shout out for it. Or maybe there's already um, someone requesting it and you can, you know, um, upvote that. And so, yes, there it is. Support feedback beautiful nice. you're amazing carl 10 out of 10 on your quick wits and amazing url capabilities <laughs> but seriously that's something that i'm really really proud of um for our team because <laughs> i've been in so many discussions with like the angular devs where they're like oh yeah we're doing it this way and i'm like why are you doing it that way and they're like oh well i had a conversation with a customer and they kind of like brought up these five concerns and i was like wow like how how thorough of you there's so many times that they will refer back to those and use them on the day-to-day -day. so absolutely take your feedback for reals so please give it we love it <laughs> um okay sorry and sorry about that awkward i was like is Catherine gone am i gone are we all gone okay we're here it was You're fair here. i was i was gone your fears were founded <laughs> <laughs> oh, i look like a goo right. but okay. <laughs> um so your app uh is incredible and for those who joined late um i will reshare the GitHub link um, that Catherine plopped in. But um, is there anything that we haven't covered yet that you that you added to our the application that is either new to the release or not new to the release that you wanted to make sure we had time to show mm -hmm. off? Probably the one other thing that I think is pretty cool to look at is our typography uh, component. So. 
I've got this on our home page and it is crazy easy <laughs> to set up. It is literally just instead of wrapping in an H1, in a P, in a whatever, you just import our typography component and wrap in typography dot H1, typography dot P instead. And then don't have to fuss with the styles and you can be sure that it's consistent everywhere it's used and it's gonna use our like established styles at the like uh, component library level that we kind of peeked at earlier. And when it renders, it's still gonna just be an H1, a P, an H2. So it's not an accessibility concern or any of that. It super easy, super quick. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh. This was a, this to me felt like a huge release for uh, not having to fuss with CSS if you don't want to. <laughs> And uh, I know that I am usually the odd one out in being the one who loves to fuss with the CSS. I so I can We're definitely think of like, basically very... every team I've been on up until this point would have loved all of these components. I, and I, I would have loved We're very rare, I think, as far yeah. as our, I went to Pixel Push, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, another thing I was thinking about is that I would have loved having them too in those positions because people that didn't want to write CSS still had to go write CSS. And usually when they did it, they wrote it very poorly, like, mm. and not a reflection of like skill or capability. Cause these were incredibly fantastic, like senior developers and people that were super skilled. This just wasn't, nobody can be good at everything. It's exhausting. There's too much. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I think it's really great that we give people the tools to write good code while not having to be a master of everything. Cause it's just, it's just not possible. <laughs> I I love it. And I'm, I'm like, so I'm just baffled at like, I, I can't wait to go look at the differences because we also got the, the typography one. And I was playing around with like customizing like the, the default states essentially of your fonts <laughs> and they scale um, through like, like if you change the font size variable and then it, the H1, for instance, will take that. And at least on the Angular side, it doubles it. And like that base yeah. font size, and that's the H1's font size. Um, and so it's doing math and it's really cool. I don't know if you've ever, <laughs> if you ever browsed through your node modules on a Saturday afternoon, but uh, yeah. if you open up <laughs> um, our, inside of your node modules, if you open up the, um, the theme, it's like a theme folder. That okay. is, yes. And so you have got to go all the way down to app progress. Uh, I think it should be. There it is. Yeah, I yep. was like, it should be here. And then Kendo yeah. dash theme dash default at the bottom. Um, it's mm -hmm. tempting at this point. It's tempting to go into the individual ones, but don't do it. Go into theme <laughs> and then go into SCSS. Uh, and then there, there's the individual ones. And so for, I think if you scroll down to typography, um, there should be, yeah, uh, the, I think variables. Yeah. Theme is empty. I think variables is one. Yeah. Yet. Yes. So yep. here you can actually see like the cool mathy things that they're doing um, behind the scenes uh, with those with the SAS variables. And if you need to have because I'm, I know, you know, not every app is the same. Not every app needs the same size H1. So if you still want to use our typography component, but you want to have a different base font size for your application and then it scales because it's not only scaling if you'll notice it's not only scaling the font size but the line height here as well um for for the headers so i love it i think it's, it's really cool and um these are the kind of files that i geek out in because i'm like how are they doing that so <laughs> but, that is really oh. cool <laughs> i had not dug deep into our node watches yet and that's me <laughs> i had that was, i who, no, oh, it was completely like ridiculously like who who browses node modules? Right. Absolutely. No, I just felt like that was cooler than I thought it would be to go look at something in node modules. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, chat. Let us know if you have any questions or anything you wanted us to highlight. But also, I know we've been shouting out about it. But maybe you joined late. We have a webinar next week. Um, and all of the recordings, like if you miss part of this, will be up on our YouTube channel, our Kendo UI YouTube channel. So, yes, but yes, let us know if you have any questions at all. Um, we have people standing by waiting. Um, but then also the webinar is another great place to get your detailed questions answered because a ton of our devs show up and hang out in the chat during the webinar 
just for you to answer your burning questions. So yes, it's a great, <laughs> a great resource. Well, cool. Do you have anything else that you wanted to highlight or show off today? I don't think so. I think we've taken a pretty, pretty solid dive through some of the coolest stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. All right. I'm double checking that we, I think we, is there anybody that we should raid? I'm looking. Um, also, do, 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 do styling. Oh, nice. Kirill uh, sent a link to, I'm going to put it in the, I'm going to put it in the big chat and then share. Um, for, oh, yep. yes, our docs. Awesome. Um, for customizing typography. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, ah! and earlier when we were kind of talking about, instead of going through the theme thing, we were talking a little bit about finding the individual variables and doing it that way. And this is where you can find that kind of information. And this exists, I think, for all of our components. You can go find each of, of these. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> One of our, our dev behind the scene is like, we have docs. Why are you in node? Get out of node. Don't show our yeah. node modules. Like, yeah, he's probably cringing hardcore that I just had you pull up our node modules. Fair, valid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we also have docs for the same thing. If you don't want to prove, you're not the kind of person that scrolls the not new modules on a Saturday afternoon. You can just read the docs like a human. <laughs> right, right. Thank you, CJ. Catherine is entertaining and informative. I agree. Ten out of ten. There's <laughs> only one half of the duo today. <laughs> so. Um, well, cool. I think um, I did not see anyone telling me whom we should raid. So I'm going to go real quick, see if we have anyone live that we support and that we want to send love to. It looks like, uh, chat, let me know. Do you want uh, Visual Studio is live right now. There is also, uh, I don't know how to say his name, Philip Planker. He does software and game development. Um, I'll give you two options. So we're going to raid one of them. VS Maybe is like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> chickens is always like, so for those of you who don't know, we have a, um, a mascot for our Twitch channel and it is the code it live chicken. It is glorious. Uh, and we also have a chickens channel that we support of, it's actually a live yard of chickens that will often chicken raid. Feed. Yeah. yeah. A chicken <laughs> feed. Oh my God. <laughs> It's the biggest, dustiest stick of all time. Yeah. Uh, so I think we will raid, um, let's raid VS Code. Visual Studio. Sorry, I keep calling VS Code because that's, that's what I know them for. Um, but yes, thank you, Catherine. That was a brilliant first live stream. You did awesome. Uh, any, any, any last words before we do our raid? No, just thank you guys so much. I am super excited to be here and see more of you as I get to keep demoing all our cool stuff. <laughs> all right, I'm queuing you up to raid. Give Visual Studio lots of love in the chat for us. And um, I'll see you tomorrow morning for the Angular coverage and then next week for the webinars. So we are raiding. See ya. <laughs> okay, we have raided.